Welcome to the Long Arm University Quilt Studio. I want to talk with you about why I do not float my quilt tops. And then I will show you how I put my quilts on my machine so the bottom of the quilt stays nice and square. There are a couple of reasons why I do not float my quilt. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about what is floating your quilt. Most people, when they quote unquote float their quilt, will have their backing fabric pinned or secured to the appropriate rollers on their quilting machine. Then they will lay their batting on top of the backing fabric. They just smooth their quilt top into position and will stitch across the top, which is fine, holds everything together, but the rest of the quilt is hanging loose and the bottom of the quilt is in a puddle of fabric on the floor, just like this quilt is right now. When the bottom of the quilt is hanging loose, like how my quilt is right now, I feel it's very hard to get a good consistent tension on the quilt top for when you're quilting. The other thing that happens when you float your quilt top, in my opinion, is that you cannot keep your quilt quote unquote square, which means that many times with quilts that have been floated, if you measure your quilt at the top of the quilt and you measure your quilt at the bottom of the quilt when it's finished quilting, you can have two different measurements which can sometimes be significant. And I'm talking about a couple of inches or more difference. Another thing that, again, in my opinion, when you float your quilt top, you are spending way too much time fussing with your quilt top, getting it ready for quilting. And I know what you're saying. You're saying to me, Cindy, it takes time to pin or secure the bottom of the quilt to a leader. And I will answer, yes, it does. But... If you float your quilt every time you do what I'm going to call a roll up, which is bringing the new unquilted area into your workspace, you have to do sometimes an awful lot of fussing and messing around with your quilt top to get it to lay smooth, be taut, and be to a specific measurement. Personally, I would rather take the time secure the bottom edge of my quilt top, and then when I roll up my quilt, all I have to do is just tighten things up, smooth the batting a little bit, and I'm ready to start quilting. Let's talk about the quilt that I have laid out on my quilting machine right now. This is a quilt that I am going to be quilting for the American Hero Quilts Organization. This is a charitable organization which gives quilts to active duty wounded service people. This quilt is 70 inches long, and when I quilt it, I am going to quilt it row by row like we normally do. My first workspace is going to be my top border. So my workspace is going to be relatively small. Then I will roll up my quilt into the next workspace, and I will start working on this first row of blocks. And my workspace there is going to be about 14 inches. There's four more rows of these blocks, so I'm going to have one roll-up for the top border, four roll-ups for the body of the quilt, and another roll-up for the bottom border, which gives me six roll-ups. This quilt, I'm going to estimate, will take me 10 minutes to pin the bottom of the quilt top to the leader of my quilting machine. If I float my quilt top, I don't have to worry about that 10 minutes, but every time I do that roll up, I'm going to have to smooth, I'm going to have to stretch, I'm going to have to measure, I have to know where the middle of my quilt is, where my edges are. I have to do a whole lot of fussing, and I know people who will not only do all the smoothing and fussing, then they'll determine where the bottom of their workspace is, and then they'll put pins through all three layers. 
And all that takes time. So let's assume that fussing and that messing around and that pinning and securing and everything else takes five minutes. And that's going to be every time you do a roll-up. I'm going to be spending 30 minutes of my life doing that. I also quilt as a business. If I can become more efficient with my quilting, which pinning and securing the bottom of your quilt to the appropriate leader makes you more efficient, and I can get my quilts done quicker because I'm not messing around with each roll up, that's going to make me more productive, and most importantly, that's going to make me more profitable. One more thing. Many times when I'm looking at the quilts hanging in a quilt show, I can tell which quilts have been floated and which quilts have not been floated. It seems to me that the quilts that have been floated always hang a little wonky. With all of that being said, now I'm going to show you how I put my quilts on the quilting machine by not floating them. The first step that I do when I am putting my quilt on the quilting machine is I take measurements. We are going to assume that the quilt that you're working on is relatively square and there are no wonky border issues. The borders on this quilt look really, really nice. With this method that I'm going to show you, if you're having some problems with your borders, it's going to become a little bit more apparent quite a bit sooner. My assumption is that your backing fabric is larger than your quilt top. I'm going to start by measuring not at the very top raw edge, but along this seam, which is between the body of the quilt and the borders. If I have a choice, I will always measure along a horizontal seam because that's the most stable part of the quilt. I know you can't see me, but I'm laying out my tape measure from raw edge to raw edge, but right now I have 55 and a quarter inches. Either mark that down or remember that and measure the fraction of the inches. Do not round up or down. This is an exact measurement from raw edge to raw edge. The top raw edge of the quilt is an unstable area and this can many times be stretched. So the measurement that you get at the very top of the quilt is going to be different from this measurement and of course if you have border issues this top measurement will be different than this number down here. So always measure along that seam line. Now I'm going to move the quilt up so that I'm in the middle of the quilt. I move the quilt so that the middle of the quilt is in my workspace. I want to measure the middle of the quilt but if you notice there's no seam there so I would then measure either across this line here or this line here. Either one of these are a seam that goes across the quilt. Again, I'm going to start measuring from the raw edge to the raw edge. Now that I've got my tape measure in position, this now measures 55 inches. So by measuring this right now, I know that there's a quarter inch difference between the top measurement and this measurement. All things considered, a quarter inch difference is not that big of a deal. Now I'm going to move the quilt so that the seam between the bottom border and the body of the quilt is in the workspace. And once again, I'm going to measure from the raw edge to the raw edge along this seam. And I have 55 and a quarter inches at the bottom here. This tells me that this quilt is square. I'm not going to worry about the quarter inch that the quilt was off at the center of the quilt. Now I've moved my leader up onto my backing fabric and right here, I hope you can see it, is my mark that indicates the middle of my leaders. Remember when we measured the quilt across in the three places. I want to take an average of those three measurements. Because all three of them were 55 inches or 55 and a quarter inches, I'm going to use the number 55 as the width of my quilt. I want to take that number 55 or whatever number I was working with 
I'm going to divide that in half. And I've got 27 and a half inches, which is our 55 divided in half. From the middle mark of my leader, I'm going to measure out 27 and a half inches. Right where the edge of my thumb is, is where my 27 and a half inches is. And I am going to put a straight pin in my leader, just like that. If you notice, my quilt is not lined up to that. I'm okay with that because I haven't started pinning anything yet. The quilt is just laying here somewhat in position, but it's not an exact layout yet. I'm back at the center of my quilt. I've lined up 27 and a half inches on my tape measure to the center mark of my leader. I'm going to smooth the tape measure out and put another pin vertically through my leaders. I'm back to the center and this time I want to talk about my quilt. The fabric is a little bit busy. I don't know if you see it, but there is a safety pin and that safety pin is marking the center of the bottom of my quilt. I'm going to match my pin to my leader just like that. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to pin through the quilt and the leader about a quarter inch away from the edge of the leader. I pin the center of my quilt first. I'm over at the far left edge of my quilt top. I'm going to take the raw edge of my quilt. I'm going to line it up to that pin. Take that pin and again pin it through both layers just like that. I'm all the way over at the far right edge of my measurements. Again I'm going to take my quilt top Line the raw edge of the quilt to my pin. Pin that horizontally through both layers. And now I have the right bottom corner pinned. I have the center pinned. I have the far left corner pinned in position. Now I can look at this edge right here of the quilt and see how it fits on the leader. Because this quilt is square, thank you whoever pieced this, I can now start pinning the bottom of my quilt to the leader and I'm working now to the left. And if you notice I'm pinning so that the head of one pin is just about even with the end of the previous pin. And I'm going to continue pinning that all the way to the left side edge of the quilt. I pinned my way all the way to the left side edge of the quilt. I'm going to go back to the center of the quilt and I'm going to continue pinning from the center of the quilt to the right edge of the quilt. And I'm going to do that off camera. The bottom of my quilt top is pinned to my leader. I've done some fan folding of my quilt top so now it's in position so I can start rolling it onto my leader. I have more details on the fan folding and some other tips and tricks on rolling your quilt onto the leader and onto your quilting machine. I will put some links underneath here to those. Now I can start rolling my quilt onto my roller which is what I'm going to continue doing off camera. You can see a little bit of my quilt top rolled up onto my roller down here. And a few quilts poking out of some storage bins that I have underneath my quilting table. And this is exactly what I'm looking for. You may be noticing that I still do not have any batting in my quilt yet. Now that my quilt is rolled up and my quilt top is on the roller relatively straight, now I can put my batting in. The reason I wait to put my batting in until last is if I have the batting in before I start rolling up my quilt, the quilt can become distorted and stretched as it goes across that batting. And especially if it's cotton batting, warm and natural, Hobbs 8020, Quilter's Dream Cotton, any of those battings that are predominantly cotton, when you try to roll up fabrics across that batting, it can cause some serious problems. That's why I wait until the very end to put my batting in, which is what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to do that off camera.
And of course, since there's no batting in, the quilt top is not pinned. It is just laying here in position. I have my batting now in place. My quilt top is not secured yet. I do have a safety pin at the center of the quilt at the top raw edge. This straight pin indicates where the center of the quilt is because a lot of the times I will cover up my pins with my batting and sometimes that will hide my mark on my leader that indicates my middle. So I like to poke the pin straight down. If you remember at the bottom raw edge of the quilt we pin the quilt to the measurement of 55 inches or half of that is 27 and a half inches. Now I know you can't see me at the center but just trust me on this because what I'm doing is I'm taking the edge of my tape measure, I'm lining it up so it's right up against that pin that stabbed into the center which I showed you earlier and now I'm going, now I'm not necessarily looking at my quilt, I'm looking at my tape measure and I'm going to measure out 27 and a half inches and I'm going to poke a pin in there which is right here and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm starting at the center, finding my 27 and a half inch mark, measuring out to the edge which is right here. Now that we have this measured out, we're going to pin the top edge to these measurements. I'm going to start pinning my layers together along the top edge. And when I pin, I'm going to pin about three-fourths to one inch away from the top edge. The fabric is pretty busy and I'm hoping you can see my pin right there. And I'm going to use half as many pins. And before I start getting too much farther, I'm just a hair off of that pin so I'm just going to call that good and even and then I can take that pin out and when I put my next pin in I want to pin, pin it so that it's about half as many pins and that there's enough space to put a pin right between the two that I already have secured and I'm going to do that all the way across. I have finished putting my pins in place and now I'm ready to stitch my top edge together through all three layers. I have other videos that go into more detail on how I stitch this and why I position my pins this way. I will put links to those videos below this video. I'm going to stitch across the top off camera and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. I've stitched across the top, I've taken my pins out, and I've tightened up my quilt top roller. I've taken the camera off the tripod to go quickly across my first workspace, and you can see how flat and how smooth my quilt top is. I'm going to quilt the top border off camera, and then I will show you how easy it is to do what I call a roll up with the quilt on the machine this way. I've finished stitching a simple feather in the border. I've turned the corner. I've done a little bit of border work up here. Now I'm ready to roll my quilt up into the next workspace. I want to quilt each block individually, so I need to have at least the block and some of the sashing into my workspace. The way my quilt is positioned right now, I could get my machine maybe about right up to here, so I do have to roll the quilt up. I'm going to show you in real time how fast I can roll up this quilt and be ready for quilting. I have a safety pin here with a piece of fluorescent duct tape on it. That just indicates to me where the end of my quilting line is so that when I get started again I can connect up to that. I have to move away from the camera a little bit. I will talk a little bit louder so that you can hear me, but I want you to watch what happens. I'm over at the far left of my machine where my ratchets are to release my rollers, which is what I'm doing right now. Now that my ratchets are released, all I have to do is roll my quilt up like that. And now I'm tightening my ratchets. I can come back to my quilt top. I move the camera just a hair so that you can see where my pin is. My blocks are in my workspace along with some of the sashing and literally I am ready to quilt. To roll the quilt up this way and be ready for quilting took me less than 30 seconds. On a bigger quilt it may take a little bit longer 
I've turned the camera a little bit so that you can see that my whole workspace is flat, it's smooth, it's straight along the edges. If I need to, I can tighten my quilt top up just a hair. Right now it looks good. I'm going to leave it the way it is. When I get finished quilting in this workspace, I will then roll up to the next workspace, which will take probably another 30 seconds to roll the quilt up and get ready for quilting. My hope is that you will at least try pinning the bottom of your quilt top to your leader, to your roller, at least once to see how it works for you. I really feel that once you start doing this, you're going to see a significant difference in the way that your finished quilts look. I am going to continue quilting this quilt and I will show you what it looks like when I'm finished. I've worked my way down to the bottom of the quilt and as you can see my pins are still in position, my side edges are still square, and I didn't have to fuss with the quilt every time I did a roll up. Now that I'm at the bottom I want to get rid of these pins because I don't want to take the risk of stitching over the pins. And I also want to take the leaders off. If I go ahead and just start taking the pins out one right after the other, then I'm going to lose my tension in the border area. I may possibly lose the measurement that I took the time to pin the bottom edge to way back when I first started. To avoid losing my tension and losing my measurements, I'm going to start taking the pins out, but I'm going to take every other pin out. I'm going to start here at the left bottom corner, take out the first pin, and then I'm going to pin it through all three layers. And I don't know if you can see it, but my pin is at least a good half an inch away from the top edge of my leader, which by the time I get the leader off, that's probably going to give me at least a good three quarters to one inch. That's what I want. I'm going to leave the next pin in the leader. Now I'm going to take the third pin and take that and excuse my reach and pin that through all three layers. I'm going to continue doing that all the way across the bottom of my quilt. One pin pin through all three layers, the other pin stays in the leader. I'm going to do that off camera and I will be right back. I've worked my way over to my left bottom corner and I hope you can see it, but I have a pin here and here and then I have the pins in my leaders. Because I have the pins through all three layers, I can now take these pins out of the leader and if I flip the leader back you can see there's the bottom edge of my quilt still pinned to my measurements, still smooth with the same tension on the quilt top. I'm going to continue taking the pins out of my leader and I will be right back. I've removed my leader from the bottom of my quilt and now I'm ready to stitch within that first quarter inch from my raw edge and I'm going to secure all three layers with stitching. I'm not going to show you how I do that right now. I do have another video that shows you step by step how I do this. I'll put the link to that video on this page. Once I get that bottom edge stitched, I take these pins out and I am free to start quilting whatever I want to. And of course, because I have a little bit of extra backing fabric and batting, I can stitch off my border and into my batting if that's what I'm choosing to do. I'm going to finish quilting this quilt. And then when I get it all finished and trimmed and bound, I will show you what it looks like. I've finished quilting the quilt, I've trimmed it, I've bound it, and now it's hanging outside so that you can see what it looks like. It turned out really nice. I want you to look at the top edge and even though there are clothespins in it, you can see that it's straight across the top and as we're coming down the sides and to the bottom with a little bit of breeze, you can see that the bottom is just as square as the top is and this is looking really nice. I know the quilt looks pretty strange hanging up that way, but what I did is I moved the bottom of the quilt up along the seam between the body and the border. I want you to see that the bottom of the quilt is the same size and the same width 
as the top of the quilt. If I didn't have the quilt hanging on the clothesline, I would have taken the bound edge from the bottom and matched it to the top bound edge. And for a closer view, I'm just going to go across the top really quickly just to show you that everything is laying nice and flat and square and I have not stretched the bottom of the quilt to make it fit across the top. One more view of the whole quilt. Again, just to show you how nice and how smooth and how straight that quilt is.